members of Congress, they've had to write a letter led by Congressman Hank Johnson against President Joe Biden. This is rare, but it is necessary given what's at stake. I'm going to read the entire letter. Let's put it up. US representatives, Hank Johnson out of the state of Georgia. I used to work for Congressman Johnson and he is a friend and a mentor, he's a good man. And Bonnie Watson Coleman sent a letter yesterday urging the Biden administration to address the humanitarian crisis in Gaza, particularly as it relates to pregnant women being killed and babies being slaughtered and left to die. The letter emphasizes the lack of medical resources available for pregnant women to give birth and newborn babies to receive proper neonatal care. The letter, which has 17 co-signers, urges President Biden to take action. I'm gonna show you some of those co-signers while I read this letter. Dear President Biden, we are writing to express our deepest concerns regarding the ongoing humanitarian disaster taking place in Gaza. Where over 18,000 people have been killed and many others are missing and presumed dead in the rubble left by the relentless bombardment that also threatens the safety of hostages being held by the terrorist group Hamas. Most alarming is the impact the bombardment is having on women and children who make up approximately 70% of the casualties reported since the start of the war. We witnessed the great hope and optimism, the diplomacy and dialogue that produced the seven day ceasefire during which time dozens of innocent Israeli and other hostages were freed from captivity while much needed aid was allowed to flow into Gaza. Now that the relentless bombing campaign resumed with no end in sight, the casualties continue to mount. We believe the diplomacy is the only way forward to achieve peace. And much more must be done towards long-term peace in the Middle East. We write with great urgency about 5,500 women in Gaza who are expected to give birth within the next 30 days. These women have limited access to medical professionals, safe delivery spaces, sanitary supplies, and clean water, the necessities to bring life into the world. With continuous bombardment causing displacement and unsanitary living conditions, the more than 180 deliveries each day are becoming emergency C-sections or premature births. Furthermore, the United Nations Population Fund reports alarming instances in which C-sections have been performed on women in labor without access to anesthesia. Newborns in Gaza are especially vulnerable. Since premature babies rely on neonatal and intensive care services, the impact of instability and power outages caused by the lack of fuel in Gaza along with evacuations and continuous bombardment pose severe threats to babies' lives. We are heartbroken by the report of nurses who were urged to evacuate Al Nasir Medical Center in Gaza City due to incoming bombardment, leaving behind premature babies relying on oxygen. Two weeks later, well, the nurses were able to return to the hospital during the humanitarian ceasefire. The babies were found dead. In addition, a reported 6,600 children have died in Gaza since October 7th, and hundreds more are estimated to be trapped in the rubble of collapsed buildings. Moreover, we are alarmed by recent reporting in the New York Times that indicates your administration talking about Biden is effectively bypassing the congressional review process for arms sales by moving forward with a sale of $106 million worth of tank ammunition to Israel through an emergency provision in the Arms Export Control Act. This action is especially concerning in light of the fact that members of Congress have repeatedly urged your administration to ensure that US arms are used in accordance with US law, international humanitarian law, and the law of armed conflict. 
These grave circumstances have resulted in ongoing and preventable crisis and the collective punishment of women and children. The scale of devastation is unfathomable and unacceptable. For this reason, we urge your administration to do the following. Number one, urge a ceasefire and immediate halt of offensive military attacks, including bombardments and other military operations. Number two, press the Israeli government to allow sufficient fuel to sustain civilian life in Gaza, including fuel for the operation of hospitals, the pumping and treatment of clean water, and the maintenance of basic sanitation services. Number three, facilitate the restoration of commercial activity and much needed humanitarian aid efforts to provide basic life-saving goods and services to the population of Gaza. Number four, continue working to release all hostages, especially women and mothers, as was done during the seven day humanitarian pause and work with international partners to pressure Hamas to allow international Committee of the Red Cross visits and care for all hostages held in Gaza until their release is secured. As the conflict rages with no end in sight and places of refuge within Gaza become more overcrowded and less safe. We urge you to use your influence and resources to advocate for an immediate ceasefire. The protection of civilians, particularly pregnant women and children in Gaza is paramount. Additionally, we implore you to facilitate the restoration of commercial activity and much needed humanitarian aid efforts to provide basic life-saving goods and services to the population of Gaza. Signed, Congressman Hank Johnson, Congresswoman Bonnie Watson Coleman, and the other co-signers as you have seen. We voted for the guy. Even Vice President Harris came out and said, the White House needs to have a more humanitarian position as it relates to the Palestinians. Who do you think she's talking about? Ravana, what are your thoughts on this? I'm really glad that you read the letter in full because I think it contains so much detail and facts that people just aren't getting particularly in mainstream news coverage. They'll hear it here, but I think it's important to hear it and know that it's coming from our elected officials, members of the Democratic Party who are acting very bravely in going against the leader of their party, Joe Biden, and criticizing the administration from within the party and more be extremely more aligning themselves with the positions of the Democratic voters. 80% of Democratic voters want a cease fire. A majority of Americans want a cease fire. So why can't Joe Biden want a cease fire? And I think it's important that we're talking about this today um, because so much of the justification for the action for the what is a genocide that's happening in Gaza is that they need to protect the hostages. They need to retrieve the hostages. And today we're getting reports that three hostages were gunned down by IDF forces, shot point blank, killed by the IDF. The, <laughs> the military that we are giving money to, that we're giving weapons to, and that Joe Biden and uh, American representatives in the UN are giving uh, political power to, to prevent you know Im important uh, votes that would undermine what Israel is carrying out in Gaza. The rhetorical support that President Biden is continuously offering the far right government of Israel and the genocide that they're carrying out in Gaza. And you know, we're getting less and less reports from those on the ground journalists in Gaza because of the lack of electricity, which Israel is causing because of the lack of internet that Israel is causing and the bombardment happening in the south where they were told they would be safe. It's not safe there anymore. It's not safe for, for men, women, and children anywhere in Gaza. And there are tireless relief workers on the ground fighting for their voices to be heard and fighting to try to do the small, the modicum amount that they can do to provide some relief to the people of Gaza. And they're being attacked by the IDF. 
Red Crescent ambulance drivers were forced out of their vehicle by the IDF, stripped naked and forced to kneel on the ground. This is the government that this is the military that our taxpayer dollars are going to. This is the military that Joe Biden is supporting. And I am so proud to see my representative signed on to this letter to see these representatives speak out for the Palestinian people and against Joe Biden specifically because he has been so vocal in his support for what's going on there. Yeah, hell of a thing, it's a hell of a thing. And when you consider how many children are being killed, the Palestinian people, they're a young, they're a young community, young. Average age 19.2 on the Gaza Strip. 40% of the Palestinians are 14 years of age and under. Look it up. So when you hear about death tolls, it's not the military, it's not a terrorist group. These are just people, all right? This is a call for humanity.